and up. If you just listen, you do not need to write, really, because I wrote it all for you anyway. You already got this shit already written for you. So you do have to listen, though, because it's hard. And I don't want you to not know what you're talking about and understand what's going on. Okay, so you have a chart already. What I would do is follow along on the chart, since you don't really have to write anything. Your, my, my employee, your colleague who went to Tri-C, typed this up for this class, this tutoring session. You're going to follow it, because she does make little typos every now and then, but follow it with your girl. I start over here, because most students don't know Addison's. And I warn you that Addison's is one of the easiest ones on the board, because it's just like dehydration. Now, do me a favor. Look at the lady on the second page. I told the young lady earlier, I said, the picture speaks about, put all that away. This is the last lecture, you can put it all away. Thank you, God, right? I don't even want to look at myself. Okay, so look at the second page, everyone. Second page, boom. Look at her. She has a blood pressure cuff on. Color it real quick. Get a highlighter, borrow a highlighter, do something. Color her blood pressure cuff. Okay, good, because her blood pressure sucks ass, okay? She's skinny. She's, she's bent over, okay? Color, color the waistline or something, I don't know. But anyway, she's dehydrated. Find dehydration if it's on there. If it's not, write it. She's dehydrated. Her blood pressure's low. Highlight it if I'm saying it. So find it on the sheet. Highlight it if you see it. Should say hypotension or some shit. I don't know. Do you see it anywhere? Postural hypotension. Good. Highlight it. Or put a star by it if you got a pen. Okay. Why is she going through all this hell? Here's why. You have to know this on your final. Because of low ACTH. Let me say something about ACTH so you'll understand it better. ACTH is adrenal corticotrophic hormone. It is produced by the pituitary, and yes, you have to know that. ACTH produced by pituitary, write it on the lady. Keep it on the lady. ACTH produced by the pituitary. For whatever reason, this lady ain't got none. If you think about it, adrenal corticotrophic hormone, cortico is the word you focus on, uh, at the top of your page, it says adrenal cortical insufficiency. Highlight just the cortical part of that word. What does that look like it means? Steroids. They don't have any steroids to help them manage stress. So look, what is part of the treatment? No stress and steroids. Write it. Treatment. Steroids. No stress. On the lady, on the lady, because that's already written there, remember? So just do your lady. Everything I'm saying is already written on the chart, so concentrate on that lady, because that lady's going to stick in your mind. She's doubled over. She's extremely weak. That's on your sheet already. Highlight it on the left-hand side. Extreme weakness. Her GI disturbance, I'm going fast because it's written already. Her GI disturbances, put this one. Nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea. Stick with the lady. N, V, and D. Down by weakness and fatigue, add syncope. Weakness and fatigue, syncope. She's so dehydrated, that's why she lost weight. Why is her phone in here? What's that? That's out there. Okay, don't care. Weight loss. She's so tired, you know, lost a lot of weight. She's fatigued, she's dehydrated. Big deal here, write it as big as you can take it. Low sodium, high potassium, so she needs a high sodium diet. She needs a high sodium diet. As big as you can, highlight where it says, it should say hypoglycemia. Does it say that on your top? Okay, highlight that and make sure you put low blood sugar. Hypoglycemia, low blood sugar. Now, let me explain really, really quickly. If I am in a stressful situation, and I always use the example of I got beat up every Friday after school when I was a kid by Debbie Jackson. She was a bitch, kicked my ass every fucking Friday. She made me, she would get off the bus, chase me, and whoop my ass. I'm serious. If I see her today, she did. 
but I don't know what she did. So here we go. Y'all with me on this? Stay with me. If I am stressed, I need something to handle the stress with. That's when my pituitary puts out ACTH. What does it do? It stimulates my adrenals to give me adrenaline. Adrenaline is going to make me either fight this cow back or what I ended up doing, which is run faster than her, go to my house and let the dogs kick her ass. I let my dogs out. They chased her all the way down. She was great. So adrenaline, either fight or flight, fight or flight. Does this patient have any ACTH? They can't fight or flight. Stress will kill them. They can't handle it. It'll kill them. Debbie Jackson wouldn't kill them. Stress would kill them. In other words, you've got to remember that on your test. Even a fender bender, just out there in the street, they bump somebody, bump their car. That's enough to kill them. So this person has to do like people allergic to bees. You know how people allergic to bees have an EpiPen? So does this patient, but it's not Epi. It's actually hydrocortisone injectable. They just bump themselves, just boom, pump themselves in the, in the thigh with a shot if they get into a stressful situation. Maybe they just got served with divorce papers, boom, shot. Maybe they just got a ticket from the police, boom, they better give themselves a shot. That's what they need. They need steroids all day. Two-thirds in the morning, one-third at night. Two-thirds in the morning, one-third at night. That's their supplements. Because they're on steroids and will be to the day they die, look, they are immunosuppressed. Be a perfect patient for a private room. Because if you can't have no stress, what if their roommate is from hell? So no stress means private room typically for these patients. They need advanced directives because this condition will kill them. You don't know which admission it'll be. Why? Because you can't go all your life without stress. It's very deadly. So it's extremely deadly. Make sure you put zebra skin and hyperpigmentation next to where it says bronze pigmentation. Put your hyperpigmentation. What we're doing, even though you have my chart already, we're making sense of it with the people. Turn the page. Now, this is where you really have to listen. This patient is the exact opposite. Don't write, just listen. Check it out. Tachycardia, not so much tachycardia, but it's more bounding because there's a lot of fluid. But watch the opposites, here we go. Low BP, high BP, low blood sugar, high blood sugar, low ACTH, high ACTH, low sodium, high sodium, low, high K, low K, dehydration, opposite of that is food retention, weight loss, weight gain, zebra, buffalo, fug it. Abrupt discontinuation of steroids, long-term high dose of steroids, none too many. See? Diet, high sodium, low K, low sodium, high K, then it becomes a different disease because we're doing, we're dealing with what makes it pushings. This is where you start writing, because all of this you can deal with later. This below the line is not on your, um, not necessarily on your uh, chart, I don't know. So we're going to go and roll with it. Is hirsutism on their sheet? Yeah. Highlight it and write acne right by it. All you're doing is highlighting. Amenorrhea, is that there? Yeah. Highlight it. Look at his cast and highlight osteoporosis. Yep, color the cast. Because that's on there. Let me give you the diet that was on the test. High calcium, high vitamin D, as well as the regular diet here. High calcium, high vitamin D. Put it down there by that foot. Because you're going to remember osteoporosis means high vitamin D and calcium. Okay? Is striae anywhere on there? Yeah. yeah. Highlight it. Does it say moon face at the top by the face? Yeah. Highlight it. Is muscle wasting anywhere on that sheet? Write it in. Buffalo hump. It says fat deposits on face and back of shoulders. The back of shoulders is a buffalo hump. This is my sister-in-law. She has all this. It doesn't say weight gain. Anywhere? Add it. 
On the stomach itself, I want you to write something. Truncal obesity. Truncal obesity. On the stomach, write it. Truncal obesity. Just write it right on the stomach. Does it have fluid retention anywhere? Yes. It does? Good. Highlight it. Yes, good. Because look. Uh, blood sugar. Does it say blood sugar anywhere on there? Good. I want you to put slow healing wounds next to that. Slow healing wounds next to the high sugar. Find it first. Don't just write because you want to really be smart about what you write. Then what's the problem? Too much ACTH. Look at the top under the title and highlight it. Where was ACTH produced? Okay, stick with me on that, because now I'm going somewhere new. If ACTH was produced by the pituitary, then it would make sense that your patient could have a pituitary tumor, because I teach you that tumors make you make too much of whatever that body part does. Now listen, if it's a pituitary tumor and it's producing too much ACTH, then you might need to have surgery. What kind of surgery? Next page. Transphenoidal hypophysectomy. Highlight it. And put Cushing's and put acromegaly on this one. Stay with me. I'll come back. Stay with me. I'm trying to go somewhere. These people will be gone. I'm going to be gone. We're still looking for a question. So here. Highlight this and put pituitary tumor. Now, this is a big source of questions on this exam. So here's what you're doing. You encourage coughing, I mean not coughing, no, not coughing. You're encouraging deep breathing, not coughing, put not coughing. Your diet is high fiber, high fluids, no tying shoes. You have to keep the head of the bed up. This patient will have nasal packing for three days. They need a mustache dressing. It's blood in the middle and yellow all around. Or a halo sign. Check for a halo sign. Blood in the middle, yellow all around. This is where the doctor, the surgeon goes. Watch my lip. He goes right in here. Right in that upper lip all the way through. So no brushing the teeth. No brushing the teeth. No lifting. No bending, no coughing, no lifting, no bending, no coughing, no valsalva. Patient needs mannitol at the bedside and hypertonic solutions and antiemetics. Yep, my feelings exactly. Look in the middle. You guys had a quiz on this, and the answer is here all along. In the removal of the pituitary gland, it says secretes. Look at all the hormones secreted by the pituitary. You're missing prolactin, so add it. By sex hormones, put LH and FSH. By ADH, put hypothalamus, produces it, but pituitary secretes it. Okay, this patient, just highlight these two things and you're done with this page. Highlight seizure precautions and IICP. Next to IICP, put Cushing's triad. Write down Cushing's triad. Now, let me give you a tip. It says under complication, do you see where it says diabetes insipidus? 
Let me tell you what that is on this exam. It's the craniotomy with 300 cc's an hour urine. Write it down for DI. For DI, it's going to be a craniotomy patient with 300 cc's of urine every hour. What is that? Polyuria. Polyuria post-op. Okay, so far so good? Done. Now, this is the only thing. I'll give it to you afterwards. But for now, go back to Cushing's, and let me give you the second reason why this patient could have Cushing's. Back to Cushing's. Here we go. I want you to write this in. Theochromocytoma is the second reason. Could have been a pituitary tumor or could be theochromocytoma. Anything ending in oma is a, is a tumor. What kind of tumor? A tumor on the adrenals. How do I treat it? An adrenalectomy. What does that mean? It means the patient is now going to be Addison's and needs steroids. So again, this is a tumor on the adrenals. How do I treat it? I take that adrenal out, which is going to cause some insufficiency. For the pheochromocytoma, I want you to put literally hypertensive crisis. That's what a pheochromocytoma will give you. It's going to give you a hypertensive crisis. 300, your blood pressure will be 300 over 150. 300 over 150. Now, I'm done with hard. This is easy. I'm not even going through it. It's what I want your little behind the right. Turn to your little hyperthyroid guy real quick. Find your little hyperthyroid guy and put hyper. Everything fast. Except write this. The TSH is always opposite. Everything is fast, but the TSH is opposite. Everything is either high or fast. Now, for this one, that's it. Turn, flip the packet, and see if you see uh, methimazole highlighted. Tell yourself to know it. Turn the page. Yeah, highlight that and say know it. Uh, that one, exactly what it says in that, in that paragraph is on the test. If you just read it, swear to God, it's so nice. Okay, next page. This is thyroidectomy, low calcium. Just write that. You see the tetany, you see Shabazz sticks. Write, low calcium, thyroidectomy, and look. And, here we go, hypoparathyroidectomy. So if you take the parathyroid out, what did you cause? Hypoparathyroid. Right, hypoparathyroid on that sheet. So which surgeries will give you this sheet, this whole page? Thyroid surgery, parathyroid surgery. Why? Because both can cause a low calcium. That sheet is low calcium, select all, low calcium. Add brisk DTRs and clonus. Anywhere, just write it in. Brisk DTRs and clonus. Okay, flip, turn the page. Clonus, C-L-O-N-U-S. Clonus, okay. Here we go. This one at the top of the page, listen. This is the easiest one on the board. Put this, slow, low, and cold, and level thyroxine for treatment. Slow, low, and cold. Everything slow, low, and cold. Add this word, if you didn't know it already, Hashimoto's. That's the other name for it. Hashimoto's. Both of these are autoimmune. It's exact opposites. Remember, you already have your chart, baby. You already have your chart. You got everything on there. Okay, because I remember she asked the question about um, that. Medicine. That's the next page. Oh, okay. 
That's why I said I covered you completely. Okay, now the next page is level thyroxine. Let me give you a select all on that. Here we go. Take it on an empty stomach. So you're not going to take it afterwards. You're going to take it before. Take it on an empty stomach. That was it, huh? There you go. Take in the morning. Don't take it with dairy. And don't take it with coffee. Don't take it with antacids. It's a lifetime drug. This patient should never take caffeine. <coughs> don't stop even if you're pregnant. And never double up. If you look at the pyramid, it's showing you it takes a while to wear off and it takes a while to kick in. Look at the pictures at the bottom, colored a guy on the right, he's got diarrhea coming out of his ass. Don't ask me about that picture. Don't ask. Don't ask. Okay. <laughs> That's so disgusting, right? Keep it moving. Let's go. Chop, chop. We're done. Come on, DI. Chop, chop. Now, be careful with DI. Put it on that page. See chart. Just see the chart. Okay, see chart. Now, go to your chart. Go to your front page. Chart, 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 front page. And look what we did. We said the trick for finals. 10 Ds, 3 Ps, and I added this. It's at the bottom. All your 10 Ds and 3 Ps are at the bottom. I added this. So add your 3 highs of DI. And let me tell you what they are. But that's the trick. Know your 10 Ds, know your three Ps, and know your three highs of DI. Let me tell you what the DI, uh, the three highs are. Check it out. Tachycardia, high osmolarity, OSM, and sodium. How do we treat it? DDAVP. Okay, so that's all there are. Now, here's what's so fun about 10 Ds, 3 Ps, and 3 highs of DI. The words that make this up are exactly opposite right here. So, tachycardia, it's not bradycardia, but it is a bounding pulse. Low, high, low, high, low, high, exact opposites. But let me give you a tip on SIADH for the bottom of your page. And when we're done, put the SIADH. I'm going to tell you how to remember this. It says SIADH. I tell you, this means not SIADH, but high ADH. What's the other name for it? Hyponatremia. What's another word for it? Water intoxication. I'm going to give you all three. Not psi ADH, but high ADH. Hyponatremia. Hyponatremia means low salt and high water, water intoxication. So I'm going to use these two as an example really quickly. If I put a teaspoon of salt in this glass and a teaspoon of salt in this glass, and I take this one and fill it all the way up with water, and I don't put any water in this one. Which one has the low salt, the one I dilute with all the water? Does that make sense? Which one's gonna taste really salty? The one with no water. That's what this is, it's water intoxication. The water diluted the salt. Okay, this is on your test. 3% sodium chloride. Find it on your chart and highlight it. We're done. And all I'm doing now is reading some things on the test. So just listen.